Hi, I'm Rob Fuller, one of the Directors of Science at the BTO. I've been interested in woodland birds for a very long time and over the years I've become especially interested in the nightingale. And there are a lot of reasons to be fascinated by this remarkable bird and one of course is its song. Um, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's actually a, a really beautiful song in the soothing way of a blackbird for example. It's a dramatic, exciting song. It's sort of by turns explosive, it's voluptuous, teasing, and of course it carries a very long way in the stillness of the night. And I guess that's one of the things that people think of first of all when they, they think about a nightingale. They, they think, ah yes, it's the bird that sings at night. But in fact you can hear a nightingale at almost any time of the night or day. In fact, many of the birds that sing right through the night are actually unpaired desperately singing all night hoping to attract a mate. Once they are mated and they've settled down they tend to sing particularly strongly though at the back end of the night and very early in the morning. They can also sing very briefly at dusk but that's not such a good time for hearing them. The song period of the nightingale is exceedingly ephemeral. They arrive in the second half of April, immediately settle into territory, are extremely vocal. But uh, the song is virtually all over by the end of May, so you've only got about five or six weeks to really uh, track your nightingales down and hear them. Um, compared with a song, um, the, the actual appearance of the nightingale is a pretty drab spectacle, apart from the fact that it has a gorgeous rufous tail. And you don't actually see them very often because they spend so much of their time skulking in dense thickets. Um, sometimes you can be lucky, especially when they're feeding young, and you can see them feeding out on an open woodland ride. Um, but they can be extremely difficult to observe. The essential ingredient of a nightingale territory is really thick vegetation, bramble thickets, uh, dense scrub, young coppice regrowth, that, that sort of thing. Interestingly, in recent years, there's actually been something of a shift in habitat use by nightingales in Britain. They've increasingly started to use scrub habitats. We don't know why this is, um, but in scrub habitats they require something with a very, very closed canopy that shades out um, the, the woodland floor beneath because these birds like to feed on bare areas, but they need to be surrounded by this fringe of thicket vegetation where they feel secure to sing from and the young hide, and the nests are usually positioned on the, the edge of that. Very often the best sites for nightingales are really quite damp, for example riparian damp woodlands along a river like this would be absolutely perfect. And although there aren't any nightingales nesting in this location now, they used to nest here up until about 10 years ago. And certainly if you go to mainland Europe, river valleys are one of the main habitats for the species. Actually we're really fortunate to have any nightingales at all in Britain because here they're right on the very fringe of their world range. As far as we know they've never nested uh, much further west than the, the River Severn and much further north than the Humber. But sadly they really are retreating in Britain now. The last national survey was carried out by the BTO in 2002 and we reckoned there were about six and a half thousand territories then. Um, when we carry out another survey, which we're planning to do in a few years' time, I strongly suspect the population is going to be somewhat lower. We have uh, several pieces of information that tell us that unfortunately the nightingale isn't doing very well in Britain. One is our constant effort site springing scheme, which um, indicates that the numbers of adult nightingales that have been caught since the mid-1980s, this is an, an annual scheme, have actually decreased by about a half. And another uh, piece of information comes from our Atlas projects. We're actually right now in the middle of um, a major Atlas project, the distribution of birds throughout Britain and Ireland. And although we're just halfway through it, it's quite clear that the emerging picture for the nightingale is none too good. It looks as though it's thinning out in its distribution on the western side of its range in this country very severely and is retreating towards the southeast. So unfortunately the bird is really only just clinging on here. Now why is it that the bird is decreasing? Well it is quite clear that at least locally some of the breeding sites here in Britain are not offering such good quality habitats as they once did. Deer are undoubtedly a problem in some woodland habitats for example. Um, deer obviously have a very big impact on the complexity of low foliage in woodlands. Um, and the deer numbers have increased greatly in recent decades and the structure of a lot of our woodlands has changed um, accordingly. 
and this undoubtedly reduces habitat quality for nightingales. But I suspect that perhaps the, the, the most important reasons lie outside Britain. Um, the bird winters south of the Sahara in West Africa. In fact, its wintering range extends from the west of Africa right through to Sudan and uh, western Ethiopia. But the birds from Britain probably uh, winter in, in West Africa. And it's quite possible that there have been big changes in its preferred habitats in the, in the humid areas of West Africa um, as a consequence of land use, land use change. And that's one of the things that we're looking at in our, in our work on um, Palearctic migrants in Africa. So it's extremely important that we find out exactly where our birds are wintering in Africa. If we can do that, then we can go to the wintering grounds and we can see what sort of pressures they are facing there. We've already made a start on this. Uh, last summer we put data loggers onto 20 birds here in East Anglia. These, these are tiny devices that the birds carry with them to Africa and we hope to recapture many of these birds this coming spring. They'll be arriving all being well in about a month's time and we're going to download the information from these and find out exactly where they, they have, they've been over the last 12 months. And we hope that'll help us to sort of pinpoint where we should be focusing our research efforts in Africa. But obviously to take that research forward we do need uh, funds and so if you really care about your nightingales, please do support us through our Out of Africa appeal.